We all know that your environment has an effect on how you move throughout your day. From the amount of light in a room, from the color of the walls, the layout of that room, the ambient noise, every small detail has an effect bigger than you think. The right environment can boost your productivity and really set you on the right track. But can a room make you more creative? Oh, the short answer is yes. Any change in your environment can be the disruption your brain needs to connect those dots in just the right way. So lately I've been looking at my house asking myself if I could change anything, what would it be? That's right, you guessed it. Let's get this thing out of here. Okay, so the chimney isn't exactly why we're here today, but it is a crucial part of the project. More to come later. Right now though, we are currently sitting in what's been my bedroom for the past four and a half years. We call it the cave, which is a pretty good representation of what it is. It's dark, it's damp, and it just kind of feels off. So I sat down, I asked myself if there was any way to bring a good, lively energy into this room. And there was pretty much only one answer. Tear it all down and start fresh. So on today's episode, we're gonna be putting in a new ceiling, new flooring, new walls, better lighting, plus more lighting, of course, more than one outlet with grounds. We're gonna be putting in a window, and most importantly, we're gonna be putting a walk-in closet where the chimney used to be. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Since we plan to put a walk-in closet where the fireplace is in the basement, what we actually need to do is start up here on the roof and work our way down through the first story uh, where we have a fireplace and an accent wall. We're gonna take all of that out and just replace it with some nice clean drywall. And then after that, we can work our way down into the basement where we can open up that cavity and put our walk-in closet right there. Day five of the project, and we are officially done with 99% of the demolition part. Today we got our dumpster taken away. From the chimney, we removed 13,000 pounds worth of brick. So that was fun to move in that trash can right there. But other than that, like I said, demo is done. Now we'll be doing some surface prep on the walls, the floors. But today I have a friend coming to help me with the ventilation, the flue piping for my water heater. We're gonna vent that up, out this giant hole, and out the roof. He's gonna help me patch that as well. And then down here, we have the edge of the bedroom and this will be the walk-in closet. No? Well, let's get to it.
Okay, so what I was trying to say was that was so much fun. What that was though, was a spray foam insulation. Here, I'm gonna show you. So, what that was, was a closed cell spray foam insulation that's gonna act as a barrier over all of the wall to help uh, with moisture. And then of course, it's gonna also act as an insulator as well. Here, we'll move our light real quick. So, big empty spots clearly where the egress window is gonna go. And then we'll spray in the rest once that gets cut in. But here is our gigantic walk-in closet. I know it looks big and long now, but wait till we get all of our cabinetry and everything in here. So, spray foam insulation is in. Next, I'm gonna put in the regular kind of insulation that everyone else is used to seeing. Those big pink rolls right there. Uh, and then ceiling's going in. And then of course the walls are going in. And then it'll be time for my most favorite part and that'll be mudding. Yay. Well, let's get to it. I definitely had to pause just so I can give you guys an update on where we are with the process. In the past 24 hours or so, well pretty much this week, all of the work that we've done has really just had dramatic visual results. So I definitely want to just bring you along on where we are and what we have left uh, so we can get to it. But take a look at this shit. bulkheads, these gorgeous little lights, super clean. The closet looks absolutely gorgeous. Can't wait to put all the shelving and everything in here. All of our black hardware will just pop right out of that dolphin fin gray that we are painting the walls with. And then we do actually have our egress window installed as well. And don't worry, I did record all of that process. I wanna put that in at the end of the video though, uh, because there is a lot of important information to go through that I don't want anyone to miss. So cool. Today we're gonna to be painting the rest of the walls, installing our floors, and then we just have baseboards left. Awesome. See you in a few minutes.
When I first started this project, I had one goal in mind, and that goal was to change my surroundings so much that my day-to-day -day thought patterns would be turned on their head. And I would say that I accomplished that feat, and then some. Adding new stimuli to your environment can have a massive effect on the way you think. It could be something as simple as just painting your walls, putting a new bush outside the front of your house, changing your siding, replacing a throw rug, or honestly, if you're not trying to spend any money, rearranging your room has the exact same effect. These simple or not so simple changes force your brain to turn back on and it draws connections between things you may not have thought about before. Plus, on top of it, it just feels good to see that new thing, especially if you took the time to do it yourself. For example, we also tied in putting new siding on the house before we started this project. Just have a look. So now every single time we pull up to the house, it's a breath of fresh air. So I encourage you to make one small change in your environment and see what kind of effect it has on you. Okay, now for the egress window. My only disclaimer is that if you plan on doing something like this on your own, please, please, please do your research beforehand. There are a lot of variables that are very, very important and if you miss them, something could go wrong, either during hand or later down the road. And we're cutting a hole in our foundation, so now is not the time to skip steps. As with any window well, start the hole. Make sure to leave room for proper drainage on the bottom and room on the outsides for mounting the well to the foundation. If you have a load-bearing wall, then you have to build a temporary support wall just in front of the hole that will be cut. I took this as an opportunity to make a dust and water shield for the saw. I stapled 6 mil plastic around the edges and cut a slit with a 5 gallon pail that collected the excess water when they made it through the wall. Once you have your hole cut and you manage to get the block out, Then you build a sturdy header with some double jack studs to carry the weight of the wall. Install your window making sure to use liberal amounts of caulk and sealant. Mount your well and make sure to backfill with clean 1 to 2 inch stone. This helps alleviate some of the hydrostatic pressure and will keep your well from rusting. I even painted the back of my well with a waterproof paint as well as well. <laughs> then finish your landscaping around that well, making sure to slope it all away from the well and the house properly. Since this is in the city, our code calls for shrubs to be planted in front of the well. Don't ask me why. Other than that, I sealed the perimeter of the window with mortar and finished it and the rest of the foundation off with a lovely muted sage. 
To finish the middle level of the house, it involved a decent amount of work to try to blend the new floor in with the existing floor. Once that was done, we installed some fresh drywall. Some new paint. And it was good as new. As with most projects, the clean look of all of the new paint and fresh drywall really draws attention to all of the parts of the house that are a little bit more questionable. So when we got our hallway painted green, we opened up our bathroom door and wanted to throw up with the color combination of the orange and the green. Uh, so we took a little side project, updated the hardware, painted the bathroom blue, and gave it a nice deep clean. All right, I wanna give a shout out to Chris from Third Coast Craftsman. His basement remodel helped me a lot with the planning of this video. I had never thought about using metal studs before watching this video, and he walks you through a good amount of the process when using them. So I felt comfortable taking that on my own. A second thank you goes to Rob from A Concord Carpenter. When doing a basement renovation, the most important thing you have to keep in mind is vapor. His videos break down the different kinds of vapor barriers and which works best. I went with a closed cell foam because it works the best out of all of the options. And a thanks to my partner Kelsey, Fernie, Jared, R, Kevin, Marcus, Jason. You all helped me out a lot during this project in, in many different ways and I am incredibly thankful. Thank you. And lastly, thanks to all you guys for sticking around to the end of this video. If you're a creator and you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe. In future videos, I will be diving deep into the creative process and applying what I'm learning to future builds. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, then don't. <laughs> All right, thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Or not. <laughs>